Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Asante, and together we're praying the third Sunday of Advent. We're getting real close to Christmas. Let's join in prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Even on these times of preparation, we need to look into our hearts and examine our lives and tell the Lord we're sorry for our sins. Let's do that now. Lord, for all the times we fail to love as we should, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we judge others unfairly, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the good we mean to do but don't, the sins of omission, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that God will fill us with joy at the coming of Christ Jesus. Lord God, may we, your people, will look forward to the birthday of Christ Jesus, experience the joy of salvation, and celebrate that feast with love and with thanksgiving. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth sprung up, so will the Lord make justice and praise spring up before all nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. My soul rejoices in my God. He has filled the hungry with good things. By the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, 
be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they said to him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? And John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent, and they asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for coming with us to celebrate this third Sunday of Advent as we get ever closer to the great feast of Christmas. We all spend, I hope, Advent trying to ask ourselves, how can I be a better person? How can I live a fuller God life? And I love these readings today for many reasons. Among them is they're so clear in telling us, you want a pathway that follows the Lord? You want to be more fully a God person? Here's the way to do it. Let's go to that Old Testament book of Isaiah. I think right away we're being told as an overall message, just do something. Don't let another season of Advent go by with good intentions that aren't realized. And how are those intentions realized? Isaiah tells us, bring glad tidings to the poor. Now we tend to think of the poor as the physically poor, and certainly that's a big group of people we need to care for. One of the things that I love about Our Lady of Lourdes Parish is we have this dynamic parish outreach and, and uh, a way to provide food for people, the food pantry. We take care of people's needs as much as we can because of the generosity of people both living in this parish and you. But those are the poor, but the poor is broader than that. The poor can also be the lonely, the brokenhearted, people who've gone through a messy divorce, people who have lost a loved one and are still in a state of being truly heartbroken. The poor are lots of people around us who are needful of somebody, namely you and me, to care. And Isaiah goes on, he says, not only to serve the needs of the poor, but the brokenhearted, and liberty to captives and release to prisoners. Um, You know, being captive, again, can happen certainly by us being in jail or prison, but we can be captive too to, to loneliness, to a feeling that we're unloved or unworthy, and that when people come along who bother to care, who make a connection to us, who bring us out of ourselves, You may have on your block somebody who's isolated, alone, feels that no one cares, and then you bother to care. Hey, can I go grocery shopping for you? Let's have a cup of tea together. In whatever way you express some human contact, you may be water in the desert for them. You may be liberation from the prison of being alone for them. 
But none of that happens unless we bother to care. We live in this very isolating environment in our culture where you can be on a block where you don't even know the names of the people on your block. That's not the way I grew up and maybe not the way you grew up where we knew everybody. We lived on a block literally where the doors were unlocked because people would visit each other. Neighbors were true neighbors to each other. I wish we could get a little bit of that back where we actually knew who our neighbors were and bothered to care. And so to provide for them release from the prison of whatever isolation they're feeling. And don't fool yourself into believing if you happen to come from a wonderfully well put together family where there's a lot of love, that there aren't people all around you who don't have that and who can only benefit from having whatever love and attention and time you can give. Every time we do that, we free them from their own prison and we become the holy person that Isaiah is calling us to be in the name of God. Okay, let's move beyond that to St. Paul to the Thessalonians. I know I'm a broken record in this, but I say it time and time again. If you really, really believe in the promises of Christ, and if you really believe we've been saved, that death is conquered, that this man born on December 25th is the Savior of the world, shouldn't you be a little happy about it? And that's why we're told by St. Paul, rejoice always. I say it again, rejoice always. Uh, bishop McGann, who was probably the bishop I served under the longest, 25 years he was our bishop. And what was his motto? Serve the Lord with gladness. And it wasn't just a motto for him. He actually was a really happy guy. And I would say 99 times out of 100, you were going to find that he was going to be in a positive place. That's not to say he didn't have lots of burdens to carry as bishop and as a person. But he seemed to realize, if I'm going to spend time with you, I'm not going to dump my negativity on you. I'm going to try to bring my positive spirit into our relationship by being a person of gladness. And, and that's what we're called on by St. Paul to do. Rejoice, rejoice always. I say it again. Rejoice always. The other thing St. Paul says is do not quench the spirit. And I think what he's saying there is you and I can decide whether it's about our children, our wife, our husband, or just our neighbor to be Mr. Pick on everything, pick, 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 or to go positive. You know, you can, as I said last week, name four things about the people you're closest to that really bother you, that really annoy you. Or you can start every conversation by letting them know, this is what I care about in you. This is what I treasure in you. This is why I'm so glad you're in my life. Do you know how good you are? You say, well, I don't want to celebrate the good and not a, a, tell them what they need to fix. You know what? We spend a lot of time telling people around us what they need to fix. And much less time, I'm afraid, saying, let me tell you about all the gifts and abilities you have. Let me tell you what I love most in you. Let me tell you what I treasure about your presence in my life. And that's what I think we're being told here by St. Paul. When he says, do not quench or quelch, quilt. Don't step on the spirit of God. Encourage people. Go with the positive. Tell them what's right about them. You'd be amazed, you know, um, because we do this Mass online, I tend to hear from a lot of you folks, and you may not think it matters when you write to me or Father Kevin or Father Andy, Father Anthony, and tell us how much this Mass and our preaching means to you, but you know, the longer we're in this priesthood thing, the more we need encouragement, and it is truly welcome when you bother to say, hey, you make a difference for us. I got a letter from a wonderful couple from Las Vegas yesterday, and they said, you know, we're back to our church. You know, the pandemic is over, so we go to our local parish church. But she said, when we come home, we listen to the Mass from Our Lady of Lourdes as well. We do double Masses because we really benefit from being part of your online parish. I got to tell you, a letter like that, I know for me and the other priests, it, it gets us through a lot because you haven't stopped encouraging I think we think that people who've been around our, our lives a long time, whether it's family or friends or your local parish priest, don't need to hear the good that they do, but we all do. Encourage. Don't squelch anything. That's what St. Paul is saying. We all of us need encouragement, and being an encourager is a godly value. And finally, St. Paul says, test everything and retain what is good. Test everything and retain what is good. A lot of my friends uh, have homeschooled their children. And when I ask them why they chose that, they'll say, well, you know, the world is an evil place and there's so much temptation. I don't want my kids being corrupted by the world out there. But sooner or later, homeschooling and all schooling ends. And our kids, our children, our grandchildren have to go into the world. And I don't want them to be so naive that they don't realize what the world's all about. It's got good and it's got bad. And they've got to choose to embrace the good. 
I have a friend who sent his uh, son to a Catholic boys high school and I said would you do it again he said it was a great education but it was such a, a, a cocoon that they had. It was such an ideal world. And then my son went off to college and he got crazy because he finally had total freedom to do whatever he wanted and he was corrupted by a lot of what he found. See, I think we do better off by doing what St. Paul says. Listen to it again. Test everything and then you choose to retain what is good. I think it's much better to know the good and the bad that's out there and to say, I know both sides. I've seen both sides. I've experienced a lot of what's in the world. But I choose the road that leads to goodness. I choose the road that leads to holiness. I'm not unaware of all those great temptations in the world that will corrupt my soul. But I choose not to live that way. And it's a choice I make. Remember we talked about last week about free will, the greatness of God as he loves us so much he gives us free will. Hopefully, to choose the right road. To be aware of all the bad stuff and how deliciously tempting the bad stuff is, but not to give in to it because we say, I know the good and I know the bad, but I freely choose to embrace what is good, holy, and godly. Finally, let's go to this gospel. One more gospel about St. John the Baptist. Here's what I love about John the Baptist in this particular reading and elsewhere. They're following him in droves. He's a popular man. Everybody knows. Have you heard about John the Baptist? He's the best. Got to go out to his baptism in the River Jordan. Okay. It would be so easy for him to start believing his press, for him to start believing that he is a great man and that he's self-invented. Every time he's challenged about who you are, he says two things. He says, I'm nobody, and whatever I have is a gift from God. But there's somebody coming after me who's the real deal. He's the one you want to watch for. He could easily have embraced the notion that he's the best man, he's the best thing since sliced bread, but he knows better, and he's willing to say that. What I'm saying is, all of us have that temptation. You know, I made myself, I'm a self-made man. What a lot of hooey. Nobody is self-made. We're made, first of all, by our God, and then we're made by our families and friends. You know, uh, I love, I, I found this quote, and I've been quoting it like crazy because of uh, the deep love I have for my, my mom, Cecilia. But I love this from Abraham Lincoln, who says, All that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Abraham Lincoln, this great president, perhaps the greatest of our presidents, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. He could easily have said, I am the man I am because of me. And now I've been saying recently, I, I talk to you guys so often about the greatness of my mom, but my dad was wonderful too. You know, he had a great ability. I think he was probably one of the best public speakers I ever, ever met or heard. And if I have any gift for, gift, gift for, I just blew it, gift for communication, I think it comes from dad. But I hope I also have what the, the um, beautiful Psalms say, give me, O oh Lord, a loving and listening heart. And if I have that, that would be from my mom. So I know that everything I am is, is God's gift and the gift and nurturing of, of Nick and Seal Lasanti. And I give all the blessings and I give all the thanks to them. And in doing that, I'm trying to emulate John the Baptist, who he had to be so tempted to say, it's all about me all the time. But he doesn't, does he? It's all about God and it's all about the Jesus who's coming. And I'm nothing compared to him. So, you know, blow all the smoke you want up my dress, but at the end of the day, I know who I am, I know who made me, I know what I have as a gift from God, and I give thanks to God, and I point the way to Christ. He is, he said, who he is because of the God who comes after him, namely the Savior of the world. It's so easy sometimes if you've had success. Some of you may have watched that interview I did a couple of weeks ago with, with Mike Pence, and when he talked about leaving the church and giving up on God, he said, I got full of myself. You know, I had some social success and I thought, I'm big man on campus. Why do I need God and religion for? Until it all came crashing down and I realized that my life is meaningless without God. But I think what Mike Pence said is something all of us can find ourselves guilty of. We start to believe that we are our own self-inventors. Instead of giving credit to the greatest source of our being, God himself, and the people who formed and shaped us, our family and our friends. You know, I've been saying, trying to say anyway, that during this season of Advent, I'm going to try to end the homily with a, a thought 
This is a kind of repeat thought, but I wanted to actually show you what I've mentioned in passing in homilies before. I'm a big fan of Norman Rockwell. I had a chance to meet him when I was a kid uh, from Stockbridge, Massachusetts days. And uh, I love going to his museum up there in Stockbridge. And of all the paintings there, I want to show you the one that's one of my favorites. So here we have Grandma and her grandson in a truck stop, little diner along the road. And all around, these tough-looking uh, drivers of trucks were wondering, what is that woman and the kid doing? And what they're doing is saying grace before meals, recognizing that everything we have is a gift from God, and just saying before they eat their, their very simple food, Lord, thank you for everything. Thank you so much. What does the painting say to me? That every good gift comes from God, that we should be eternally grateful and not be ashamed of saying in front of the whole world, I belong to the Jesus Christ whose birthday you celebrate on December 25th. I'm so proud to belong to him, so grateful for everything he's given me. I didn't invent myself. I am who I am because of the grace of God and my family. And I find in this painting this beautiful image of a grandmother and her grandson saying, at the end of the day, all is grace, all is yours, Lord. And I will never be shy or embarrassed to, in front of the whole world, say, you are my meaning, you are my purpose, you are the source of my being. Thank you so much, Lord. As a people of faith, let's now pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, trusting in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers of petition. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer, that the church may be blessed with an ever more effective voice in the world to herald the joy of the gospel to all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all church leaders, through their ministry of service, may help prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world and local leaders may seek the values of heaven rather than the values of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Tricia Valdero, Paulette Sewell, Myrene Burleson, Eva Singer, Patricia Carbone, Janet Chavelle, Jerry Los Quadro, Elaine Lentini, Mary Brogan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray. For all who have died, especially James S. Brabowski, William L. Beck, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we pray. pray. For the intention of this Mass, Carol Graham, William Sullivan, birthday intention of Jesus G. Dunca, Kathleen Weisbrod, Robert Richard Roche, first anniversary, intention of Valenti family, Martelina Morales, Jimmy Brown, Father Tony Heinlein, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let me add a few intentions. We're asked once again to pray for these twin babies, uh, Carmela and Liliana, and they are the child children of Raquel and Stephen Arnone. 
and uh, the parents have said, please keep my, our twins who have gone through a tough pregnancy in your special prayers, and we do. We're also praying for my friend Tom Slade. Tom's uh, been through really rough heart surgery. He's doing better, thank God, but keep those prayers coming for a great man, Tom Slade, uh, Anne-Marie Anne -Marie, uh, de Blasio. I pray as well, of course, for Tony Falanga, and uh, I want to pray as well among those who are sick for Jose Josena, for Glenn Hudson, for Jamie Scotto, for Joe Falgiano. I pray too for Kathy Bordingo, Judge Anthony Falanga, Eddie Mullins, and all those who are going through any kind of captivity. I pray too for Mary O'Brien and Tommy Burke and Tom and Patty Yanch, Katie O'Connor, Angelo and Al Clemente, Leanne Lasanti, Kimberly Cusack, Christine Bauman. I pray for Michelle Leonhardt and Russell Castro Giovanni. Pray for Vincent Rienzi Jr. And among the sick, I keep in mind Roy Citrano, Sam Maggio, Susie and Vinny Vignardi. I pray too for Rosalie Salco and Richard Monaco and Herb Stouter, as well as Judy Alaco. And then let me pray too for those who have passed from this life to the next. This is the new list that I've been given. So I pray among those who have died for Craig Scott, for Bessie and TC Center, for Thomas Minter, beautiful four-year-old. I pray for Roland Rossi and Jenna Tuller, for Margie, Margaret Smith, for Tessie Teresa Palmo, and my old friend Phil Cordararo. I'm gonna do a mass for him at St. Patrick's Cathedral on January 4th. Pray too for Frankie Cazzetto, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, uh, Billy Sarasoli, who's the father of Billy and Michael, Ray and, and Monica Kerrison, Maureen, pardon me, Margaret O'Connor Lasanti, Bridget Clementi, Cecilia and Nicholas Lasanti, Irene and Tom Romano, Ed June and Eddie Jandovitz, and Beverly Maggio. Among those who have died, I also recall uh, Betty Moore and Regina Brightman, Justino Joe Ameren, for Tom Sully O'Sullivan, for Alfred John Sicali. I pray too for Emilio Alaco, Paul Struzieri, Maria and Albert Cavelli, Anna and Gary Gomes, and all the people we love who passed from this life to the next. I remember all of our men and women in the armed forces. I pray for their safety in these dangerous times. I pray for uh, all the first responders that we count on, the police and firefighters and EMTs, our doctors, our nurses. I pray too for our EMTs. I want to pray too for our friends in Ukraine for the freedom to keep the battle going for their democracy. I pray for our friends in Taiwan and Hong Kong and wherever people long to be free against oppression. I pray for your special intentions in mine and I hope all of us are praying for peace in the Holy Land. Let's join together in saying as we turn these intentions over to the Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, may the gifts we offer in faith and in love be a continual sacrifice in your honor and may they truly become our Eucharist and our eternal salvation. And we ask you to grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we dwell always and everywhere. 
to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. His future coming was proclaimed by all the prophets. The virgin mother bore him in her womb with a love beyond all undertell with a love beyond all telling. John the Baptist was his herald and made him known when at last he came. In his love, Christ has filled us with joy. And as we prepare to celebrate his birth so that he may come and find us watching in prayer, may our hearts always be filled with wonder and praise for him. And so now with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory as we join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness and all your actions show your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness, and you set us over the whole world to serve you, our Creator, and to rule over all creatures. And even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped all people to seek and to find you. Again and again you offered a covenant to us and through the prophets taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so love the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To those in sorrow, joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death. But by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live, no longer for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and to share with us the fullness of grace. Father, may the same Holy Spirit now bless and sanctify these offerings. Let them become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. He always loved those who were his own in the world, and when the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, he showed the depth of that love. While they were at supper, Jesus took bread. He blessed the bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, Savior of our world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death his descent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming again in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice which you've given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit, gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. 
Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people everywhere. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present, and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the, de all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and in the company, too, of all the apostles and martyrs and saints. And then, in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature, through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. When I was a kid, there was a young priest in my parish, Father John McGrady, and he was kind of inspiring. He was young and dynamic, and uh, he passed away this past week. We're going to celebrate his funeral this coming week. But I was thinking, you know, there aren't that many people to step forward and replace the John McGrady's, Father John, the good priest that he was. What I'm going to do is ask you now to join me. If we love this church and we love our sacraments, we need priests to be sure. Let's pray with the Our Father for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, to religious life, to the many lay ministries of the church. We love this church, right? We want to see it continue. It needs good people to be generous and step forward, and for that we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. The sins of the world grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a, a few announcements. Most importantly, if you're not living nearby, just go online to our parish website and you'll find all the information on the opportunities for confession before Christmas. Good time to go to confession, best time in some ways to go, so you can face Christmas Day with a, a heart and soul truly free of all sin. So do that, and then also you'll find the mass schedule for that Sunday, which is technically Christmas Eve, as well as Christmas Day. We've added a few masses here and there, and. Uh, please take a look at our bulletin online and you'll find all the times. And if you're anywhere on Long Island, just know you're very, very welcome to come and join us here at Our Lady of Lourdes in beautiful Massapequa Park. As always, I invite you to keep on thinking about being generous to parish outreach and all those who are trying to make Christmas special for those who are going through hard economic and social times. So grateful for what you all did at Thanksgiving and you continue to do for the people in need at Christmas time. As always, I invite you to be with us on Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti. If you happen to have Sirius XM, we're on channel 129, the Catholic channel on Sunday three times. But if you don't, just go to your computer and you can type in Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti and you will find our interviews. Two great interviews I want to mention to you. This week, I just got a chance to watch it myself. I taped it, but I hadn't watched it till last night. Father Aaron Westman. He's head of, of Glen Mary Missioners, who go to the poorest sections of our country to serve the needs of the poor and to try to build the Catholic Church in those areas where very few Catholics live. But he's written a book called The Church's Mission in a Polarized World. And he specifically gets into what are you supposed to do when in your own family people can't even talk because they're so ostracized from one another because of conditions in the world or the political situation in our country. And he's got some great ideas on how we can as a church work to bring people together and to truly listen to one another. Great guy, smart guy, but also a compassionate guy, Father Aaron Westman. And then next week it's David, David Nekrutman. Now I wanted him on because I had heard him speak years ago He's both an American and an Israeli citizen, and he put together something called the Isaiah Project, and it helps Christians and Jews in a particular way to better understand each other, to honor each other, and to see that we are complementary faiths in so many ways. He also goes into, as you'd expect, I asked him a lot about the whole situation of the war between Israel and Hamas, and he has some uh, points of view on that as well. But very, very wonderful guy who, uh, by the way, is the only Orthodox Jewish person who first or ever got to a degree, a master's degree from Oral Roberts University, he wanted to better understand us Christians. So he went to a very Christian university in America and got his degree there. And the, at that point, the first Orthodox Jewish person to do that. So he's an open-minded guy who wants to recognize, and we say we're a Judeo-Christian people, we mean it. That to be truly Christian, you gotta understand your Hebraic roots and that uh, we want our Jewish friends as well to understand why we believe the fulfillment of the promise is Jesus of Nazareth. So if you can be with us this week, Father Aaron Westman, next week, David Nekrutman, and uh, it would be great if you join us on Personally Speaking. You can get it on YouTube very easily. Okay, let's pray. God of love, God of mercy, may this Holy Eucharist bring us your divine help. May it free us from our sins and prepare us for the birthday of our Savior, he who is our Lord God forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you and your families. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. O come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day. One hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste.
Come, come to earth, dispel the night, and show your face, and bid us hail the dawn of grace. O come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day, when a harp shall sing its triumph, and a sadness flee away.